Hey, what's good? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know about the plugin H delay. Also, I have a secret little surprise for everyone that stays till the end of the video. I'm going to be going over some insane ways that you can supercharge your delays to make them even better, taking them from basic and boring to absolutely sick. So make sure to stay for that. First thing we're going to do is drag in H delay. This is what the default setting looks like. The first thing you want to do is turn off that analog noise. If you don't, there's going to be this really annoying analog humming noise that's just going to make your mixes sound like absolute. Once you do that, the two biggest things that you need to focus on to get your delay sounding right are the focus knob and the delay knob. These serve as the foundation of your delay. What the delay knob does is dictate your delay time, which really means how long it takes your delay to activate. Let's take this vocal here, for example. This is what the eighth dotted delay sounds like. All the thing that you bring me, Let's hear a couple different options. Keep in mind that I'm going to over exaggerate it so you can really hear the effect. Here's what it would sound like with a quarter note delay. All the a half note delay. All the that you bring me. And then the one bar setting. All the that you bring me. Now what you would do is just set this to whatever vibe feels right for your track. Some quick rules of thumb are that you're trying to get an echoey type effect just on certain words and phrases. Usually the quarter note or the half note is going to be your best bet. But for spatial type effects that are really just trying to add dimension to the vocal, usually 8th, maybe 16th or 32nd is going to be your best for that. Next we have the feedback knob. What this knob does is determine how long your delay is going to last. Crank it all the way up, you're going to last all night, baby. But down here, you may not even be able to go 30 seconds. Here's that same vocal with a higher feedback setting. All the things that you you can see how it keeps going and going. But then if I turn it on a really low feedback setting, see it only delayed once, it didn't keep going. Simply put, if you want something to delay for a really long time, turn up the feedback. If you want it to be a little bit, put it in the middle. And if you want it to just be one time, turn it all the way down. Now, as far as these little buttons go, nine times out of 10, you wanna keep it on the host setting. What this does is sync the delay up to your host BPM and it's gonna allow you to get the cleanest results. If you really wanna go crazy and go in some Kanye off grid shit, you could turn it to MS, but if you ain't a seasoned professional, you might not be ready for that life yet. Now, after you set your feedback and delay knobs, you wanna head over to that filter section, baby, that Brita filter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We about to get that shit sounding crazy. This is gonna allow you to EQ your delay and take out the highs or the lows. If you wanna reduce the high end frequencies, then you would adjust this low pass filter. If you want to take out the lows, then you would adjust the high pass filter. Now, if you use them both together, you can get some really dope mid range delays. And this is how you would achieve that telephone effect that's really popular these days. All the thing that you bring me. I use these to keep that delay off that lead vocal because that delay wants to take the lead vocal spot, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes that lead vocal has to puff his chest. So you got to check it with this high pass and low pass filter. No, you catching my drift. Now the next thing you want to mess with is that money section right up here, baby. If you activate this ping pong feature, you're going to notice that the delay signal bounces back and forth from your left to right ear. Let me show you. All the thing that you bring me. Now these other buttons right here are to invert the phase. But if you push this button, it's gonna make it sound wide and coursey and sick. All the thing that you bring me. You can really notice how it just spreads out like crazy. This can be sick because what you can do is kind of wrap that delay around that lead vocal to where it's just giving it a nice big warm hug. Mm -hmm. Next is the lo-fi section, baby. Mm, yeah, come over here. Bring me that lo-fi. You turn on this lo-fi button, you're going to be giving it some saturation and distortion and overall analog-y type sound. And as you're going to tell if you mess with this plugin, if you mess with the depth and the rate on the modulation tab, you're going to get some really freaky like alien type like UFO type stuff like out of this galaxy type stuff like you might be able to talk to aliens and this is what that sounds like all the things that you bring me Yeah, I don't be using that section a lot. The other thing you need to keep in mind is how you're gonna be using H delay. The first way that you can use it is just on your channel. If you choose to do this, what you're gonna be really focusing on is this dry and wet knob. I would usually keep it anywhere from around four to maybe 30 on the high end, depending on how much delay that you want. All the things that you bring me, but while you can do that, the second option is what I would recommend, and that is using a send or a bus. So in Ableton, you would just drag it on one of these return tracks. And when you're doing this, make sure to turn the draw all the way up. And then you just want to adjust it on the amount of signal that you send to that return track. And in Ableton, this is how you do that right here. Now, if you've made it this far, here is that secret sauce. The key to supercharging your delays is to add effects. What kind of effects you might ask? Some really common ones that I use are a doubler. Some reverb. All the things that you bring me. A phaser, chorus, and or metaflanger. Bring me. 
and pitching effects. Bring me, now. now that real crazy life starts to happen when you combine all of these things at once. Me personally, I would never use a delay without any of these effects because what these effects are gonna do is add dimension to your mix. And that dimension is what separates an amateur mix from a professional mix. That's all for today, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. If there are any other video ideas that you would like to see in the future or ways that I could get better and improve my content, make sure to let me know in the comments. Also subscribe to the channel if you're down. If not, I'm gonna be making videos regardless and vibing. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's week. Hope y'all are having a good one. Keep making that dope music. I'll see y'all next time. Love you.